Hi there, in video number six of the series I decided to um, redesign the Conrods uh, which turned out okay uh, but then I subsequently found out after making the flywheels that uh, the Conrods wouldn't actually fit between the gap between the flywheels so in this video I'm going to have a go at making the Conrods again uh, but this time to the uh, specification in the drawing Okay, so this is the uh, type of shapes we're trying to achieve and the drawing suggests using 2024 aluminium but I can't get hold of any of that so I'm going to use 6082T6 and uh, I've marked these two pieces up and um, I've drilled some 6mm diameter holes here that define this taper so that will come in useful later on when I uh, cut that taper but I think my first milling process is going to be um, taking some of this off here to actually create the thickness of the conrods this area here and this one is a bit further up okay so uh, I, I need to mill out both sides of the conrod and uh, the center needs to be round about 0.188 of an inch so that means I need to mill out uh, on each side round about 156 thou. Now um, it, it needs to be milled out from this point up to this point, but both sides have got a radius on them of round about three millimeters or an eighth of an inch. So what I did was I put a wiggler on there on that point, then I moved the table that way by three millimeters, and then I'm going to be using a 12 millimeter cutter, so I moved it that way again by six millimeters. Then I uh, zeroed the DRO in memory location 1 and I repeated exactly the pro same process on this side but zeroed the memory location in uh, memory 2. So now I can replace this with a 12mm cutter and I can start cutting down to the uh, required depth. So what I'll do is I'll cut this section out here down to a depth of 150 thou. Then I'll cut this section out here to 150 thou. Then I'll mill out all the middle and then uh, once I've got it all down to roughly 150 thou I can do a final cut to get it to 156. Looking good, so uh, I'll switch it round and uh, do the other side, but I'll do that off camera. Seems to be going okay, apart from the rain outside. 
like turned out okay so far. So uh, the width of those is round about uh, 0.188 of an inch. So I think what I'll do now is I'll uh, drill and ream the holes for the big end and the small end. Now the small end um, both need to be a quarter of an inch ream. So uh, first of all I'll, I'll open that up to six millimeters and then ream. The big end um, this one needs to be reamed to 12 millimetres and this one needs to be reamed to 15 30 seconds which is slightly smaller than 12 millimetres but I'll open both of them up uh, with a 29 64th drill bit So this is a 15 30 seconds reamer. So the centre location of the small end is 3.375 inches from the centre of the big end. So I'll repeat the same process on the other uh, conrod, uh, but this time I'll open it up to uh, 12 millimetres on the big end. But I'll do it all off camera. Okay, so now to cut the taper. So using my uh, tried and trusted method, uh, I've put these drill th bits through the uh, six millimetre holes. Some parallels there, just supporting it at the moment. Tighten the vise up, so I move the bits out. Remove the parallels and now I know if I cut down to the bottom of that hole um, it should meet up with the bottom of that hole. Well, it was all going very well until I forgot about the power feed was all ready switched on and uh, I've taken a bit of a chunk out of it there but I think I might just be okay uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it back this one back on the mill um, this big end needs to be machined down to a width of a quarter of an inch so I'll take um, 0.125 off the top of that I'll rest it on some parallels and then on this side this big end needs to be uh, 0.375 of an inch, so I need to take off uh, 0.0625, uh, so 62 and a half thou. Once I've done that, I'll switch it around on the parallels, but I'll use some slip gauges to um, raise this end by 62 and a half thou. 
so it's parallel again and then I'm going to do the same machining if that makes sense so it's on the parallels so 0.125 to come off this So what I'll do is I'll clean it all up, um, I'll switch it round, so I've just put some slip gauges underneath and on the parallels and they're making up uh, the 62 and a half thou at this end. So this top here is exactly level with this top here. So what I need to do now again is to repeat what I did on the others. So that is to take 0.125 off the big end and uh, 0 0.0625 off the little end, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, so the uh, width of both little ends has been reduced to 3 eighths of an inch now and uh, I think my next process is to um, uh, turn the ends uh, but before doing that on the rotary table I'm going to uh, whip these sides off with the uh, hacksaw but I'll do that bit off camera. So to uh, cut the radius on the uh, little end I use this type of setup so obviously rotary table, I've got an MT2 uh, arbor there which um, I've previously cut down to a height of these 1, 2, 3 blocks. Um, so that it's exactly at the same height as the 1, 2, 3 blocks and I've bolted the 1, 2, 3 blocks to the table. I've then um, put a little bit of packing under the uh, conrod and then bolted it down. and. Uh, the rotary table was originally on centre. Now this is a four, uh, sorry, an eight millimeter um, end mill. So I moved the table this way four millimeters to put the cutter on centre. Now the radius on this needs to be uh, 0.219 of an inch. So I moved the table again 0.219 of an inch, and then set the DRO to zero. And now I've moved the table further out so I can start nibbling away at these corners. And I'll do it in 10 thou increments until I get to the zero point. When I get to the zero point, I'm, I know I'm on the radius of uh, 0.219 of an inch. So I reckon it's going to take uh, 15 more turns of this table to get it down to the desired uh, radius. But I'll do all that off camera. Well they've turned out okay, happy with those. So what I need to do now is to follow a similar process for the big ends. Now this is a little mandrel that screws into um, this uh, arbour. And uh, that's the one I used for the little end which is a quarter of an inch in diameter. So what I've done is I've made this collar. Let's go around that, onto that like that. So what I need to do is to uh, put some uh, packing under here and then clamp it and I'll be ready to mill this.
Well, they look okay, and I think the only outstanding uh, machining task now is to uh, mill the slot in there so that this other big end can fit in. Okay, so having studied the drawing again, um, initially I was a bit confused by a 39 degree angle here. Uh, but having worked it out, what it means is this needs to be milled out, leaving um, an angle like that. So this will be solid. So I know this width here is 0.375, so taking the tangent of 39 degrees and multiplying it by 0.375, I get a value here of 0.304. So I've marked up here, took me two attempts like, from that point to this point, 0 0.304, and then scribed a line to that corner. So I need to mill this section out up to that point, not going beyond it. So to do that, I think I'm going to have to hold it in the vise. Sort of something like that, so that's parallel with the top of the vise. Well, the scribe line looks to be parallel with the top of the vise. So I've got this four flute um, six millimeter end mill. It's going to take a while, is this? Um, so I'll take it nice and steady. I think that's just about got it uh, but with this being a six millimeter cutter um, I need to take uh, round about eight thou off each side but I'll do that off camera so the bush that holds the conrods together I got from simply bearings and it's a 06 dot DLU dot 08 and uh, I got two of them so that's the spare one and I've pressed that in and uh, Works a treat. So the inside conrod is swivelling around that, and the outside conrod is gripping it, and then that's how it inserts onto the crank pin. Quite impressed, really. Well, I must say, I was a little bit concerned about the uh, conrod design, but uh, having made them, they do seem to function rather well. And uh, in my next video, hopefully I'll be able to assemble all the bottom end. And I got loads of suggestions about how to sort of assemble the crankshaft and make it sort of like, you know, rock solid permanent. So I've got a few ideas in my head in terms of how I'm going to go about that. Um, but anyway, in the meantime, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later. <laughs>